Mark chapter 7, verse 24. <clears throat> and from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon, and entered into an house, and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it onto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. He said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Let's ask the Lord to bless his word. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for this text that we're considering this evening as we think of this wonderful passage of Scripture where the Savior casts out the devil out of that little girl. We're so thankful that her mother came to Jesus. Lord, I pray, Lord, tonight that as we examine this story, I pray that we'll each be encouraged with whatever our problems are, whatever our troubles are, I pray that we'll bring them to Jesus. I pray, Lord, that if there's someone here that's never been saved, never found forgiveness of sins. I pray that that one will come to Jesus for salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> it was Abraham Lincoln who said, I've been driven many times to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. I had nowhere else to go but my knees. Now that's, that's how it is. In our world today, there are many problems. And more often than not, they are more than we can handle. But praise the Lord, there's someone we can go to, someone we can take our troubles to, someone we can go to in the time of need, the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been going through the Gospel of Mark. We really, it's been a long time since we've been in the Gospel of Mark. It was before I went on vacation. Do you know how long ago that was? It was back in November. And then we came back and we have been did Christmas messages all December. And now, first time back in the Gospel of Mark. But the Gospel of Mark is the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And as we've been going through this book, we've seen over and over and over again, the Lord prove who He is by what He does. He's shown us His deeds. He's shown us who He is by His miracles. And over and over and over again, we see the crowds thronging Him, coming to Him for His miracles, coming to Him, because of who he is. And tonight, it's no different. Tonight, when we're back in Mark chapter 7, there's a lady that has a terrible problem. She has a daughter that is possessed with the devil. What's she to do about that? The same thing we do with all of our problems. We come to Jesus. This evening's message is entitled, Come to Jesus. First of all, come to Jesus. Because number one, He's no secret. It's no secret that if you got something that you need help with, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's the one to take it to. If you need an answer to your problem, if you, need a, if you, if you have the need of for your soul, if you have a, need a cure for your ailment, it's no secret where you got to go. You got to go to the Lord Jesus Christ. I see in this text how our Savior is number one here. He's a secret that cannot be hid. He's a secret that cannot be hid. Uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ is in your heart, you cannot hide him. When the Lord Jesus Christ is in your home, you cannot hide him. When he comes into your life, he cannot be hid. I find it so interesting that this text begins with Jesus looking for a place to hide, looking for a, a getaway. He's gone into the coast of Tyre and Sidon, le left Galilee behind him, left the place where the Jews and his ministry was behind him, looking for a getaway, a place to rest, a place to get away from it all. And so they come into Tyre and Sidon. They're along the Mediterranean Sea. It's in modern-day Lebanon. 
And he finds a house that he enters into. And it says in verse 24 that he would have no man know it. Don't tell anybody that I'm here. But he could not be hid. You can't hide the Lord Jesus Christ. He tried to be in secret. He tried to stay away from the masses. He tried to not let anyone know he was there. But he could not be hid. He was right there for this lady to see, for her to go to. You can't hide Jesus. You, you can't, if you know him, if he's in your heart, you cannot hide the Lord Jesus Christ. The fact that he was in that home, that wasn't going to be kept secret. You weren't going to be able to smuggle him in and out of Tyre or Sidon. And I don't know about you, Christian, but for me, I find I can't hide him. I find that since I asked the Lord to be my Lord and Savior, he, he kind of shows up everywhere. He comes out in my walk. He comes out in my talk. He, he comes out in my smile. He comes out when I'm serious. He comes out. I cannot hide him. I used to put the programs together for the People's Gospel Hour, and one thing I loved to do was to pick the songs for the broadcast. And three times a week, I'd pick a Bill Milner song, and he sung a song that I really like called When God Dips His Love in My Heart. And the song says this, Well, I said I wouldn't tell it to a living soul, how he brought salvation when he made me whole. But I find I couldn't hide such a love as Jesus did in part. Because it makes me laugh, it makes me cry, it sets my sinful soul on fire when God dips his love in my heart. They can't keep it secret. When you're in love with Jesus, it's going to come out. He cannot be hid. He's a secret that cannot be hid. And so secondly here, he's a secret that must be told. Typically, you think of a secret, you, you don't tell anybody about it. But the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to tell others about him. In verse 25, there Jesus is in the house where he wants to be hid, but he can't be hid. It says in verse 25, For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. Here's a woman with a serious problem. She has a little girl, literally. That's what the word young daughter means there in the text. The Greek word is young daughter is implying a little girl. Perhaps no bigger than Liliana or Rosalie. Just a, a little girl who's home because the devil is having a heyday with her. She's possessed with an unclean spirit. And the mother sees the devil destroying her little girl, and she's thinking, what can I do? How can I help her? What's the solution here? And what she needs is Jesus. What she needs is someone to tell her about him. And praise the Lord in the text, there was someone who did. The Bible says in verse 25 that she heard of him. Somebody told her, about the Lord. Somebody said, you know that miracle worker in Galilee, he's come here to Tyre and Sidon. Someone said to her, I've seen this man, he cast out, you mean, you remember that demoniac in Gadara? He had over a thousand devils. He cast them all out and the pigs ran over the cliff into the sea. That man, he, he raised Jairus' daughter right from the dead. That same one, he can help you. He told, they told her about the Lord Jesus Christ, and she came to him. And that's what you and I need to do today, is we need to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. They need the Lord. There was a missionary who visited a boy that was dying in the encampment, a gypsy encampment in England. And the missionary went to this dying boy and recited to him, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And when the missionary finished, that dying boy faintly looked up and said, nobody ever told me. Nobody had ever told him. Hearing that story, Mary Slade from Fall River, Massachusetts, she wrote a hymn 
called Tell It Again, into a tent where a gypsy boy lay, dying alone at the close of the day. News of salvation we carried, said he. Nobody ever has told it to me. Did he so love me, a poor little boy? Send on to me the good tidings of joy. Need I not perish? My hand will he hold. Nobody ever the story has told. Bending, we caught the last words of his breath, just as he entered the valley of death. God sent his son, whosoever said he, then I am sure he sent him for me. Smiling, he said at his last sigh he spent, I am so glad that for me he was sent, whispered while low sank the sun in the west. Lord, I believe, tell it now to the rest. Tell it again, tell it again. Salvation story repeat o'er and o'er, till none can say of the children of men, nobody ever has told me before. It's a seeker that needs to be told. There are women out there with little girls like this lady in the story that they need the Lord. There are men who are desperate. They need the Lord. There are families facing crisis. There are grown-ups facing struggles. They all need the Lord. They are sinners who need a Savior. They need the Lord. They need his help. And for us today, it might be that there's someone here tonight that you need some help. Where are you supposed to go? Who's supposed to take care of you? Who's supposed to meet your need? Who is, maybe you're still lost in sin. You've never been saved. Where are you supposed to turn? It's no secret. You can go to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can call on his name. You can come to him. All that are weary and heavy laden, he will give you rest. He'll take care of you. I'll tell you where I went for help. I went to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where I went to find mercy, to obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I went to Jesus. That's where you can go to. Go to Jesus because it's no secret. He's the one that you need. But then number two, go to Jesus. Secondly, because he won't turn you away. He doesn't turn anybody away. You see in the text, he won't turn you away no matter who you are. Perhaps you're someone here today that says, you know, I can't go to Jesus because I'm not worthy to go to Jesus. He won't receive somebody like me. I've, I'm gone too far. I, I, he won't look at me. Just look at this text before us. He receives everybody. In verse 26, you'll see here, it tells us about this lady's background. It says, the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. She was a Greek, a Syrophoenician. First, let's just state the obvious. That means she wasn't a Jew. She was not of the nation of Israel. And that might not seem significant to you, but at this time that was very significant. Because if you've noticed in the Gospels, when you read of the Lord's ministry, he was, a, he was taking care of the Jews. He came unto his own, the nation of Israel. His own received him not. But he, he was sent in Matthew chapter 15, verse 22, or 24. He was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Interestingly enough, Matthew 15, 24 is the parallel passage of Scripture that tells the same story of Christ with the Syrophoenician woman. Uh, not only is she not of the house of Israel, but she's a Syrophoenician. Uh, she's a local there of Tyre and Sidon. Matthew chapter 15, verse 22 tells us she's a woman of Canaan. She's a Canaanite. You know who the Canaanites are. That's the people that Noah cursed in Genesis chapter 9. That's the people that were in the promised land that the children of Israel dispossessed under Joshua in the, in the book of Joshua. They're the, ones that, they're, they're the ones that God kicked out to give them the promised land. And now this lady's one of them. And not only that, but she's a Syrophoenician. Do you know who the Syrophoenicians were? Who in the Bible was one of those? She was the daughter of Ethbaal. Her name is Jezebel. This is her country. These are her people. This lady was from that part of the world. 
That's her pedigree. That's her family tree. That's where she came from. Do you think that God is going to help somebody like her? Do you think that he'd really be interested in helping her out? In this text, no, it doesn't look like it, does it? In the Gospel of Matthew, uh, it tells us how she cried to him and she didn't answer him. She didn't, he, or he didn't answer her. He didn't speak to her. The disciples actually come to Jesus in Matthew's Gospel and they, they say, send her away for she's crying after us. And he says, I'm not, that's when he says, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then the lady comes before him and says, Lord, help me. Lord, could you please do something for me? But the Bible tells us in our text that Jesus said, let the children first be filled, for it is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it onto the dogs. Well, that doesn't sound like he's interested in helping her, does it? You know what he's telling us? First, let's just be clear. You might read something like that and get offended. Remember this about the Lord Jesus Christ. He did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Nothing he said was ever wrong or sinful. So what's he telling her? Well, he's actually telling her in a very nice way that he simply can't help her because she doesn't belong there because she's a Jew. He's telling her that she's an outsider. It was customary in those days for the Jews to call the Gentiles a word for dogs that was kuon. That meant a scavenger dog, a wild dog, a hound. And they would call Gentiles that to state how they were wicked and vile and outsiders of Israel unclean. But it's interesting that in this text, Jesus didn't use that word. He didn't call her the word that everyone else would have called her. He actually used another word for dog, that word kunarion, which doesn't mean scavenger, it just means a puppy or a household pet. And it was a nice way of saying the hard truth that he had to say. It was a nice way of saying that she was an outsider. Jesus told her that. And yet, do you read the text? Does he send her away? No, the disciples said send her away in Matthew's gospel. But Jesus, even though she was an outsider, he doesn't send her away. And to remind her to us, you know, that's what, this is a, a hard truth that is hard to tell people. But it's the truth that everyone needs to hear. That when you were born into this world, you were born an outsider to heaven. You were born on the outside. You were born in sin, shapen in iniquity, and in sin did your mother conceive you. If you were to die just the way you were when you were born into this world, if you were to stand before the pearly gates, not having ever come to Jesus, you wouldn't gain access there. They'd say, you're one of Adam's children. He sinned and you're a sinner like him, and you're not welcome here. But the good news is, there is someone who can get you into heaven. There's someone who can get you past those pearly gates. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. You just got to come through him. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if you come by him, if you come to him, he's not going to turn you away. John 6, 36, he said, He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. He doesn't turn anybody away. Just come to him. Come to him. He's no secret. Come to him. He won't turn you away. He won't turn you away no matter who you are. But I also see in this text, he won't turn you away no matter how many times you ask. You ever... Uh, this is terrible to ask this question, but you ever get tired of somebody maybe... Uh, asking you a question, <laughs> get tired of someone maybe knocking on the doors, calling your phone, texting you. You ever get tired of someone who just won't go away no matter how many times you try to send them off? Has that ever happened to you? Well, if it has, 
then maybe you can relate with how the disciples were feeling in this text. Matthew tells us they come to the Savior and they say, Lord, send her away. She crieth after us. They wanted the Lord just to give her the miracle, just to get rid of her. They were sick of her. It was time for this lady to move on. But one person who never got sick of it was the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't mind whatsoever. Here she is again. Yea, Lord, yet the dogs under the table will eat of the children's crumbs. She won't st- go away. She's just sticking around. The disciples couldn't stand her. Send her away, they said. But Jesus didn't mind. In fact, if you notice in the Bible, this is the kind of behavior that he actually encourages. He wants you and I to be just like this. He wants you and I to just keep on asking, keep on knocking, keep on seeking, keep on coming unto him. And he'll answer our prayers. He he doesn't mind our continual asking. That's encouraging to me because you know how I am. It drives my wife crazy, but I hate to bother somebody. Anybody else here hate to bother somebody? Yes, you hate to bother somebody. You know why? You're just like, yes, I know I could call this person. They'd help me with this, but I don't want to bother them. I always feel like I'm disturbing their whole day just for, just for me. And I'm, I, I'm not important enough to disturb their day, so I'll just let them be. Let them alone. I hate to bother somebody. I hate to ask too much of them. I hate to interrupt them and ask them for a favor. I hate troubling people, I guess. That's just uh, probably my pride, but that's how I am. (laughs) But I think sometimes we get this idea about the Lord Jesus Christ. We we, we, We think as if he's somebody we could bother, somebody that we could irritate by our constant asking, our constant pleading, our constant praying. We feel like the things we're asking for are too much to ask for, too much of a nuisance, so we stop asking. But Jesus told a parable in Luke chapter 18 just to encourage us to never stop asking. He taught the parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint. He told the parable of the widow and the unjust judge, how the unjust judge had no interest in answering her prayer, but because she kept on knocking, kept on asking, Finally, he relented and gave in. Remember, our Savior is not like that unjust judge. He wants to answer our prayers. He wants to hear our plea. So just keep on asking. Keep on asking. He's he's not going to turn you away. No matter how many times you ask, so come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He's no secret, and he won't turn you away. But then number three, Come to Jesus, number three, because he's more than he, he's got more than enough. He has more than enough. So come to him. I love what the lady says here in verse 28. After Jesus says, let the children first be filled, for it's not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it onto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. She's saying, Lord, I I don't need a lot. I just need a crumb from under that table. Uh, she, She says that, when she says that, Jesus, because of this saying in verse 29, she says, for that, he says in verse 29, for that saying, for this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. Come to Jesus. He's got more than enough. All you got to do is ask. But I see in these verses that, yes, all you got to do is ask. He has more than enough. So that means we should ask in humility. Ask in humility. Um, This lady is a perfect example for us of asking in humility. This lady reminds us that how she approaches the Lord, that's how all of us need to approach the Lord if we want to receive anything from him. We want him to answer our prayers. We need to follow this example because what did she do? She humbled herself. 
He said, it's not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she said, yea, Lord, but the dogs, they eat the crumbs from under the master's table. She said, Lord, yes, I'm, I'm a dog. She used the same word that he did, canarion. I'm a, I'm a puppy, a domesticated dog, you, you can call it. She was just saying, I'm an outsider. I admit that. I'm not part of the family of Israel. I, I'm not worthy to be in your presence. She humbled herself. But she said, Lord, will you help me? Will you help a poor outsider like me? She humbled herself. And that's what the Bible tells us to do. If we're to go to God in prayer, the Bible says, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time. The text reminds us if we're to come to Jesus, we need to come in humility. We need to come remembering who we are and who he is. Who am I to come to him? Who am I to come into his presence? I'm a beggar. He's the king. I'm a creature. He's the creator. I'm a man and he is God alone. And we come into his presence I wonder how many prayers of ours go unanswered because we don't humble ourselves and don't come before him as beggars. We, we, we go to the throne, but we come in our pride. We come in ourself. We come demanding. We come expecting God to yield to us and forgetting that we are the beggar. We are the creature, and he is the creator. Her prayers were answered because she asked in humility, but also, because he has more than enough, we ought to ask in faith. Ask in faith. What I love about this verse, too, is that this woman shows her great faith. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus says, I have not seen so great faith. No, not in Israel. This lady demonstrated great faith. She recognized who Jesus is and his power. She recognized that all she really needed was just the teensiest bit of his power. Just the littlest bit. She understood who Jesus is. This too is something we need to remember. They that come to God must remember, must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let him ask in faith, the Bible says, nothing wavering. I think so often we don't ask in faith. We're wavering like a ship on the sea we're wavering we have in our minds that what we're asking is is not possible we have in our minds that what we're facing is too big even for god but you know what this woman reminds us of no matter what your problem is it's little for god no matter how big it is to you it's small to him i would think that if I had a child that was possessed with the devil, I would think that was a big problem. I would think that that re would require a great work on God's part. I would think that, that it was a significant task that I was asking God to do. But this woman understood that with God, who is all powerful, nothing was too big a task. Even this was just a drop in the bucket of his power. This was just a crumb from the master's table. And when will we realize that to God, our problems are never difficult? When we realize that to God, our requests are easy. All they needed to do throughout this gospel is touch the hem of his garment and they get healed. All he has to do is speak the word and the daughter lives. All that needed to happen was just a crumb to fall from the master's table. And that would be sufficient. So what's our problem today? It might be large to you. It's large to me. But to Jesus, it's easy. He can do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. The Bible says, according to the power that worketh in us. And it could be that there's someone here today that's not a Christian, someone that says there's no way you could save me, no way that I, I'm too hard of a case, I've, I'm too far gone, I've done too much sin. Well, listen, if he can save me, he can save you. 
If he can save a Saul of Tarsus, the persecutor of the church, he can save you. Just takes one drop from the blood and you'll be washed, sanctified, saved by God's grace. Because he's more, he's got more than enough. Just ask in humility. Stop trying to do it yourself. Humble yourself. Call on his name. Ask in faith. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be saved. He is more than enough. Come to Jesus. He's no secret. He won't turn you away. He's got more than enough. I have two more quicker points tonight. The number four, come to Jesus. And when you do, you won't leave disappointed. Come to Jesus, you won't leave disappointed. Verse 29, our Savior says, he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil has gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Think of how nice that would have been for that mother to go home and find her little girl sleeping like a baby. Probably was a little girl about that size. She went home and she wasn't disappointed. And when you come to Jesus, you don't leave disappointed. He's never met a case that's been too difficult. He's never had a problem that he hasn't been able to solve. There's never been a time where he hasn't lived up to the hype. You go to some things, you get all your expectations, you go there and you're like, Oh, that was a disappointment. That was a letdown. I was expecting something so much grander. Well, and when you go to Jesus, you won't be disappointed. He lives up to the hype. He solves the problem. He meets the need. He does not disappoint. He satisfies the soul. The Bible says to just try him out. Taste and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Taste and see, try him for yourself. Just like this lady, you won't be disappointed. Come to Jesus. He's no secret. He won't turn you away. He's got more than enough, and you won't leave disappointed. And then one more truth. Come to Jesus. He's there just for you. He's there just for you. You look at this text, and uh, I get this point from verse 24 and verse 31. You might say, how in the world is that there? And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. And then verse 31, and again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. That's interesting. Where's any point in those two uh, verses? (laughs) Nothing really there. You see, we've been looking at this text as, and the Lord acted, and you might be tempted to believe that this whole time he didn't care. You might have this idea that he's not really interested in helping this lady and her daughter. Really, she was a nuisance to him. He was looking for a place to rest, and then she came and ruined the whole thing. That's what you might be tempted to believe. But I look at this text and I see this. He was there just for her. You read the text, he comes into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. What else do we read of that happened during that trip? Do we read of any great gatherings? Do we read of any other miracles, any other works? No, he came there, one thing happened, and then he left. Could it be that the whole reason he came was because there was a lady there who had a daughter who was possessed with the devil and he was there for her. He was there to meet her need. And so it is in our lives. We think God really doesn't care about us. Why We're not that important. He's not very concerned about us. And, and oh, it, it, we're more of a nuisance when we come to him with our problems. But the fact is, he's there just for you. He's very interested in you individually. He's interested in you as a person. In your life, he is at work. Sometimes you might have to ask more than once. Sometimes it, it, you, might, you might not realize that he's really there. Sometimes you, you might think that he's not listening to you. But he's always at work. 
And when we get to heaven, we'll be able to look back and see his hand that was leading us the whole time as he was weaving it all together, just like in children's time this morning, as he's connecting the dots in our lives and bringing it all together. He's there just for you. So just come to him. He'll meet your need. Come to Jesus. He's no secret. He's not going to turn you away. He's got more than enough. You won't leave disappointed. He's there just for you. So what's the burden of your heart? What's weighing on you? Give it to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a story of Stuart Hamblin. I guess he was a star in Hollywood back in the 1940s. And he got saved. Became a real Christian. In fact, he was so radically changed that he wanted to win all his friends to the Lord. And so he went to his friend, his close friend, star Johnny, John Wayne, and tried to witness to him about the Lord Jesus Christ. He urged John to accept the Savior too. And John Wayne replied, Stu, it's great what's happened to you, but it could never happen to me. Stuart Hamblin said, John, it's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. John Wayne said that'd be a nice, nice song one day. But anyways, well, Stuart Hamblin took that and he wrote a song, number 848 in our hymn book. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. I wonder, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? It's no secret. He's the Savior. He's the one that you need. The question is, will you come to him? Let's pray. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for the text that you gave to us this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the story of that lady who came to Jesus. Lord, it could be tonight that there's someone here that's not saved, someone that needs to come. Lord, I pray that they'll see that the one they need is you. I pray that they'll come and put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Just want to give you the opportunity to respond tonight. Always like to, at Missionary Bible Church, give you the opportunity to respond to what we've heard. It could be as a Christian, you have a trial, you have something that you need to pray about. Take the time right now to talk to the Lord. Tell him whatever it is that's on your heart. You won't bother him. You won't bug him by telling him what you need, telling him your prayers. But also, could be that there's someone here today that's not saved, someone that's never been born again by the Spirit of God, someone that's never put their faith and trust in Jesus. If that's you, would you raise your hand and we take a Bible and show you how you can be saved? Anyone at all? Our Father, thank you for the time we've had in your word. I pray that now you're blessed in communion time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.